G'day, today I'm just going to give some tips and tricks that I've found were helpful for me uh, in getting the uh, Skullstorm achievement. Um, one thing that I did do is that I had to um, reset my game after I got the Skullstorm achievement because I still needed to get the Trinketeer achievement and I found that that was going to be much easier if I reduced the amount of cards that I could possibly come up. So I've reset my deck if you wonder why some things aren't ticked and, and I've focused because I've, I've burnt through this very, very quick. Uh, and so that's that was definitely the way to do it. So for trying to get the Skullstorm achievement uh, and what I found worked for me, you definitely want to do this deck, the uh, the one with the Direwolf in it. Now, for those that don't know what Skullstorm is, you basically have to finish the game with all uh, skulls ticked. I um, The reason that you need this guy in your, your hand is that you need a Direwolf to be able to win this. He's the only thing that is going to make it all the way for you. Now, if we can actually see an adult die wolf, we might still grab him too. Because uh, he's also a nice option. But obviously with that, you were, you were at the mercy of the, the board actually giving you one. And it hasn't. So what we'll do is we'll just take another up one because there's nothing else here that's overly great. Um, maybe a raccoon. But... Um, what we need to do is you need to have a dire wolf, and the only way to win this is if your dire wolf is doing... If it's, if it's a dire wolf pup, he needs five damage by the time he's reaching the top. So what we're doing here is we don't have... Um, we don't have the time to try and use an adder or a ringworm or anything to get these guys up to health. We basically need to just hopefully fluke that you can put one of these guys into a fire twice, and the fires that you are getting a damage, and that he can be on six health by the uh, sorry he'll be on five damage six as an adult by the time he gets to that first um that first boss essentially um the idea is that we need him to be able to kill a bear and then do enough damage to win the game in a single move so that's why i'm saying that only a um a die wolf can do it because it's the only creature that is going to do that two punch in a single hit. If he's on the board when all the bears show up, he's going to do his first damage, kill the bear, and then he's just going to put through the damage to win the game. But obviously you can see, since he's only doing four, he's not doing enough. He needs to be doing six, because he has to be able to kill the bear. Now, the other things that um, I would give tips on, on how to win this, the other card that becomes incredibly important in a, in a game like this is going to be the magpie, and potentially... Um, potentially a black goat. Black goat's not not as important because if you're using a dire wolf pup, he's only going to cost you two blood, so you've got an all right chance of being able to use him. Uh, since this is health, it doesn't matter anywhere near as much. Uh, what we might do is just give our dire wolf pup just one little bit of health. But basically, if we don't see a second fire, this won't work. If we don't, um, if he dies in the second fire or even in the first fire, it won't work. If you used, you could potentially use a ringworm or an adder to kill the people at the fire. If the very first fire you got, or even one of the later fires, was a, um, uh, if if like if if it was a health one, so it didn't matter as much, and you could like hopefully get that chance of having them be killed. But um, apart from that, yeah, you're really at the mercy of um, of the game. And this is where this is going to be, that you've got to play it a few times, because if at any point our Dire Wolf dies to one of those, then that's the, the game. Um, the benefit that I think that there is in not killing the guys at the fire is it means that when you're... The other thing that you need to try and do is have as few cards as possible in your hand. Uh, that is the other thing that I would, I would recommend. Once I've got that card, I don't want that card to get buried in my in my deck, I need him to be able to, to pop up to the top so that I can um, so that I can use him. If he's if I've got 14, 15 cards and I just can't see him, then he, like he's useless. So um, it's pretty useless pick for us. But um, so you need to make sure that you're try you're actively attempting to have as few cards as possible. So you can see in this layout here, this one's going to mean I can have less cards. That's not going to reduce the amount of cards I have. And in fact, it would give me an extra one because I currently um, have a full pack. But in knowing that, I, should, I would then, act, if I had to go that way, I would actively try and get rid of something out of my deck, out of my hand here, rather. Okay, well, he's not going to cause us a problem. So what we can do is, again, just get our Dire Wolf pup going.
I mean, you can see the impact he's having on these, these early games anyway. So all we got to do basically is just cross everything as we get to this second fire. Hope, because it's the last thing before that boss fight. So we have to hope that it's a damage fire. Uh, and that... Um, what do we want from that? We want a noose buck. And if it's not... Um, I don't know. I don't know what we got to hope for then. Okay, so what we want to get rid of here is is another thing that we can aim to do is that you can see these guys obviously have the clocks on them because that's one of the, the conditions. What we can do to get rid of one of the clocks out of our hands, because if I was to merge him onto someone else, it's going to merge the clock along with him. But if I put him on, say, the coyote, that's going to consolidate that clock to the same one guy. So there's now just one clock on him. So... That is one way you can reduce the amount of clocks. The Dire Wolf, it generally doesn't matter. He has so much health and he does so much damage. All right, we're half the way there that we've got this showing his damage. Now we cross everything and we squint, look away a little bit, and there we go. We have a Dire Wolf that can win the game for us. So when it comes to this fight, you've got to remember that the strategies that you're used to having through all the fights previous now no longer apply. You don't have to be concerned about who you're using in Act 1 of this fight because Act 2 isn't going to get rid of your guys like it does uh, in the normal game. So we can see that's a normal frog too, but we don't have our, our mate in our hand at the moment. So what we want to do is just sort of try and drag this along a little bit. So what we will do... Mm -mm -mm, how are we going to make this carry on? So let's put him there. Get him to do one damage for us. I know he's going to die as a result, but this is where you can sort of see the, the importance of... Here we go. Thank goodness. Uh, being able to access the lower cards in your deck. Now, the problem is that he is now going to do three damage, and he will win. So, important to always have um, some things on the side there. But I'm still not even sure we're actually going to be okay here. Oh. Yeah, I'm not sure. Let's have a look. He's going to do the three. Um, we're going to take that. We're going to pull that. And we go one, two. That's the wrong dial. Ah, oh, criminal. That should be okay. Well, we might be okay. No, because he's going to do one damage. Now, here's one extra thing that you can do in this game. It's... Definitely not something I did till I'd already finished the game and I was just trying for this achievement. And in fact, it was probably about 60 games into doing this achievement that I thought, oh, I could try that. If you press escape in this game, you'll notice that it says last saved a minute ago. So what I can actually do is I can drop out of the game. And then when I return, I actually go back to the start of the fight. Now, one thing to note with this is it doesn't look like there's any way that you can actually alter the layout of the fight. Like I'm still going to start with the exact same set of cards in my hand, the raccoon, the um, who else was in there? The moose. And... Now, actually, the moose might be the guy that I want to try and bring on the board here early. So... Let's go. We'll go one shot. So, it basically means that the game isn't actually going to alter. The, the layout of the game is going to look identical to what you saw the last time you did it. The only thing it's going to do is it's going to allow you to have a second shot at what you saw. Um, so what we can do is we can lay out the squirrels. We can put them on the board and we can ask him to start trying to chip away at these guys. Now already you can see that one point he wins, two points he wins anyway. So um, we can't actually win this fight. It's, uh, it, it is always a painful one to see. We've got three things there. Um, he'll kill that. Those two will kill him. Even if I move that, he won't, uh, he won't be able to stop them. So it's, it is a great example to show why you need to try and reduce the amount of cards that you have in your hand. This one is just pure bad luck. Um, I have tried wandering around the room just to see if there, like when I've been stuck at a point like this where it's like, well, the, the cards I have and the um, the equipment I have isn't allowing me to, to do anything. So it's like, all right, well, what if I, what if I change this? Like, what if I, I move this around to, to say, open it? What if I like try and alter what my little guy looks like? Does that do anything? What if I sort of just click on anything? What if I change the song that's playing? What if I 
click on every single um, mushroom in the in the house. On that, um, it, it doesn't look like there's anything that will actually alter what what you're about to see. Um, you can even see that the game actually just saved again. Like as I sat down again, it does save to suggest that there was something that changed, but um, it definitely isn't the order of things that you have in your deck. It's actually quite interesting to try. If you um, if you know that interaction you have with the trapper where he like oh, sorry the, the gold digger where he lets you pick a piece of gold and you crack it. That actually never changes. If you if you pick something and then you quit and load and you change which card you're picking, you still get the same item. Um, so there, all you're allowed to do with that escape um, is is basically see the same thing that you were already going to see. Uh, that's that's basically it. So what can we do? All right. What if we take a second squirrel and we play this guy here? We play that guy there. And we put the raccoon there. So this is our last ditch chance. But I mean, we also also the the order that we pick up cards isn't going to change. Uh, we are still going to see the the other dire wolf pup is always going to be the first one in there. Um, basically, yeah, our hands are tied. So that's the um, that's the like again another thing that you've just got to to approach. It's it's part of what you need to do in order to. Um, one of the other things that you need to be aware of is the card that I need to see at the top, is he going to, to float to the top? And so the only options that you have there is, um, can I get him to, can I have more than one of him? So if you see a, uh, a painting, or if you've already got something that's got a uh, magpie on it, make multiples of the magpies. On my winning one, I only had the one direwolf, but I had two or three, I think, raccoons that had the magpie ability on it because it meant that all I needed to was to have one of them float to the top of my deck and then I could get him. Um, so it, and it sort of meant that I could continue to upgrade the one guy, uh, the, the direwolf could continue to sort of just be that really strong one. And then everyone else, your, your goal is to reduce the amount of cards that you have. Go to fires, pick who your worst card is and put them in there twice and hope that either they're going to become good because you're about to double them or they're just going to die and you've reduced the amount of cards in your hand. You've got a better chance if your magpies or your um, direwolves coming up. You've then got to go to caves. Hopefully you don't have any, you might not have anything in your hand that's got skeleton like bones on it, which is great because you can always pick bones at the caves and means you're going to lose. Always make sure that you're missing an item when you go to... Um, the bags because you don't want to get given a, a pack rat. It's just another card that you're, you're going to have to work your way through. If you do have multiples of magpies, make sure that when you do get to a uh, mushroom that you're not going to be combining them together, that you do have something else that's going to get combined. Um, sometimes even if you just, when you go to the trapper, if you pick up two pelts, you can combine those and that'll mean that you only pick up one card if you actually do get to a, like the shop to put them in. But it basically is... You've got to try and have as few cards in your hand as possible. You've got to race to get a direwolf to having five damage, or if you've got a fully grown direwolf early in the game, put that ability on someone who's easy, a shark or a bear that you only have to level once to successfully get to 6-6 six, six damage, and then they can do the work for you. Once you get to that, um, those boss fights, if you can pace yourself, do it. Try and get as many of the cards in your hand as possible if, if you think you're going to need them. But if you've got that direwolf on the board, he's going to hit a bear. He's then going to hit another bear. Like, sorry, he's not going to hit the other bear. He's going to hit the first bear. He's going to kill him. You're going to get your six damage and you're going to go through. Um, same thing, same rule applies to the Leshy fight. If you do make it all the way to the Leshy fight, uh, it's going to be the, the pirate captain that you're up against. And he's reasonably generous. If you've got such a strong um, direwolf already, that direwolf should be able to win that fight on his own. The only downside of Direwolf is going to be because he's got that clock ability, he's going to be getting hit for two damage as opposed to just one. Um, but it's not that big a deal. He, he should still be able to, to do it. Uh, it is sitting as the rarest achievement I've ever gotten, the 7,000 whatever that I've gotten. Uh, so definitely happy hunting. Uh, and, and yeah, good luck. Any questions, let me know. Catch you later.